bowling follow through. The follow through begins after the release of the ball. Ideally, the non-bowling arm bends and tucks close to the body as it pulls down and rotates. Shortening of the lever increases the speed and efficiency, which helps to generate pace and accuracy. A common error includes a straight leading arm. A slower, less efficient pull through results. For maximum pace, I recommend bending and tucking the elbow before it flows into a full extension. Perhaps the most common error is the flying elbow. Commonly, this results in the head falling away from the ideal position and often the ball is pushed inaccurately, rather than released from a balanced position over the front leg. Completing the action. As the non-bowling arm tucks into the side and rotates, the bowling arm follows in a synchronised motion. The standard delivery requires full rotation and the completion of the action. The non-bowling arm extends and the bowling arm finishes past the leading hip. When bowling an in-swinger, the release point is often higher and the bowling arm follows through straighter. Direction. A well-balanced, completed bowling action results in a straight, powerful follow-through. A common error is when bowlers follow through too straight and step into the prohibited danger area. If the bowler has a closed foot alignment, following through off the danger area can be difficult as it requires more body and hip rotation. The other issue is when bowlers veer off the wicket too soon. This is often due to poor balance. At practice, if you keep running into the side net, this may indicate poor balance, caused by head and front arm pulling away from the target. Length. Length of follow-throughs may vary naturally, depending, amongst other things, speed of run-up, height of gather, and energy in the action. There is no ideal length. However, a common error is when young bowlers stop very quickly after releasing. As a rough guide, a seam bowler's follow-through should be at least a third of the way down the pitch.